So the first component of the carnitas conversation is pork, specifically pork shoulder or butts, which for some reason are one and the same. I got about four pounds of nice fatty pork shoulder that I'm gonna cut into two inch pieces, seasoning generously with kosher salt, tossing to combine, and letting sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes, just general best practice with stew meat. Then over on the stovetop in a large Dutch oven, we're depositing an astounding two pounds of lard, combining that with the juice and subsequently squeezed carcasses of one orange. In this case, I have a cara cara orange, but you can follow your heart and use whatever orange suits your fancy. A half a yellow onion peeled and itself cut in half. The contents of one 12 ounce bottle of Coca-Cola, preferably Mexican Coca-Cola as it's made with cane sugar, unlike the US version, which opts for the state mandated high fructose corn syrup. Then I got four peeled cloves of garlic, optionally crushed, two to four bay leaves, depending on how much um, bay leaf you like, one teaspoon of toasted cumin seeds, and one tablespoon of dried oregano. Cover this guy up, crank on the heat, and bring him to a joyful simmer, at which point we're going to drop in all of our awaiting porky pieces. Giving things a cursory stir to make sure that everybody's well coated in fat, trying to get the pork as submerged as possible, bringing the mixture back up to a bare simmer. And now normally you would carefully cook this thing on the stovetop, but we are parting with tradition by braising in a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven, uncovered for one and a half hours, removing every 30 minutes both to admire and and to give it a stir. Then after the first hour and a half of cook time, we're adding one five ounce can of evaporated milk, stirring to make sure that it's evenly distributed and returning to the oven for another hour and a half until the pork is completely tender and everyone in your kitchen, in your home, and on your city block can smell the greatness emanating from your oven. Now at this point, you can shred and prepare the carnitas as desired, but I like to let these guys chill overnight. This both allows the flavors to meld and prevents too much juice and gelatin from being squeezed out of the pork by shredding it when it's still hot. So Evacuate all the pieces onto a rim baking sheet. Be sure to hang on to some of this cooking fat. It's completely delicious. It's going to come in handy. And if you don't believe me, try frying some eggs in it. Also, be sure to generously bathe the pork in its own cooking liquid before leaving it out to cool to room temperature about one hour. Then we're wrapping in plastic wrap and refrigerating overnight. The next day, and it's time to shred. You can do this with two forks or two spoons or two novelty wolverine claws or two hands. Maybe dumping it onto a slightly larger tray as pork seems to expand when shredded. Then you can pan fry this stuff in batches, ideally in that reserved pork fat, or you can throw it under a medium broiler for about 10 minutes until it's browned and crisp and ready to become a top tier taco. Season one more time with salt before serving, and for that, here are a few options. I've got some corn tortillas that I've heated up in a dry cast iron pan and kept warm in a clean kitchen towel, loaded up with carnitas, topped with diced onions, and gesturally cilantro. Serve with sliced limes, and you've got yourself a simple, unimitable classic. Crispy, juicy, impossibly flavorful carnitas taking front center stage. But this primo pork can play any number of roles in any number of game day or non-game day snacks. One of my favorites being flautas or taquitos. First we're toasting or microwaving small corn tortillas to make them flexible, chopping up a thin line of carnitas and rolling them into the tortilla, rolling them tight and keeping them seam side down so as they do not unravel. Rinse and repeat as many times as your schedule allows, and then we're headed over to the stovetop where we have about a quarter inch of neutral flavored oil like vegetable or canola preheated in a heavy duty cast iron pan. Carefully add the flautas and press them seam side down into the oil to seal them shut. Let them fry for about a minute or until they're turning golden brown. Give them a flip and continue cooking until they're golden brown and crisp all over. Drain on paper towels and hit them with a little bit of kosher salt while they're still hot. Now to top these guys up, ideally we want to drizzle them with crema, a Honduran cultured sour cream. But it's a little bit hard to find so you can approximate it by whisking together lime juice and sour cream until it reaches a drizzleable consistency. Stack these guys up on some pointless leaves of lettuce, some diced onion, a whole lot of crema or crema approximation, some crumbled cotilla cheese, and of course cilantro. Nice big leaves so that people like me who don't like cilantro can pick them off. And there you have it, carnitas taquitos, carnitos, or carnitas flautas, or carnitas. That one didn't work. So you made tacos and flautas for your guests, but now you're alone, it's late at night, you're probably stoned, and you still have all these carnitas kicking about. You don't want them to go bad, do you? Sounds like it's time to whip up some carnitas nachos. I like to start with a layer of just chips and cheese, followed by chips and cheese, followed by the carnitas so that the chips are insulated by cheese, then more cheese. And then this guy's headed into a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for some amount of minutes until the cheese is melted and the carnitas are sizzling. At this point, you can add all the not hots, radishes, tia, peppers, pico, and guacamole in my case. And there you have it, carnitas nachos, or 
car nachos. But in the very unlikely event that you make all these and you still have leftover carnitas, in what ways can we start to bend the rules a little bit? How about some carnitas cubanos? Pull apart party style. For this, I have some King's Hawaiian slider rolls, which I'm gonna brush down with melted butter cut side up because I'm gonna do something bad insane. I'm gonna build these little sandwiches inside out so they have a nice flat surface on which they can be toasted. So first I'm putting down the slider tops cut side down, then cutting off their tops. I'm glad that there's a visual aid here, otherwise this would make no sense. I'm doing this just so there isn't too much crust inside my sandwich, which is a new sentence. Then I'm shingling down some black forest ham, laying down a generous pile of our carnitas as a stand-in for the mojo pork, dotting that with pickle chips from the world's smallest container of pickle chips, and then shingling several slices of Swiss cheese. Give that a stylish squirt, mustard, top that up once again, confoundingly upside down, grab another rim baking sheet that I have preheated in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven, press it down on the buttered surface with a satisfying sizzle, and weigh everything down with something heavy and oven safe like a cast iron pan. Toast for five to seven minutes before removing the top pans and continuing to toast until heated through and melty. And there you have it, near instant Cubanos for a crowd. Obviously, carnitas are not mojo pork, but I've certainly had less authentic Cubanos claiming to be the legitimate article. And it's pretty hard to argue with the flavor. And how do you do that anyway? How do you argue with a flavor? You don't. You just shove the whole sandwich in your mouth, swallow it like a snake, and go on about your day like you didn't just gleefully eat a pound of carnitas.